Hey everyone, my name is Klomp, and today I'll be breaking down my new track, Watch Me, which is out now on Sounds of Mayhem. Alright, so let's jump right into it and start with the intro. Uh, it's pretty basic, there's like three or four elements that are playing throughout the whole um, the whole intro, and uh, the main one is just this melody here. It's just a couple, a couple sine waves with some white noise on it, uh, and I have a transient shaper and a pitch hack that we introduce later, so it's just the, the bare melody to start. And then a little bit later, we're going to introduce this pitch hack, which is just seven semitones up, so we make a nice little harmony there. Makes it sound a little bit more evil. In the background here, we have this sort of like atmospheric patch, uh, which is just, I'm pretty sure, a vital preset, like a stock preset. Uh, and then some spectral processing to make sure it's ringing out like the root note of the song. Um, and that's this is what this sounds like. And those two elements together uh, pretty much make the entire foundation of the intro. Um, super, super simple song. So for the next part of the tune, it's a build-up, sort of, but not really. Um, and it's where we're going to introduce a couple more elements. Uh, the main one, or my favorite one, is going to be this vocal here. Um, Um, and basically that is just come, it's just a regular like metal vocal sample. Uh, and I'm just like sort of unwinding that, uh, redux right here, uh, to just the point where you can sort of make out the words. Um, and it sort of has like that cool transitional effect to it. Um, and that's pretty much going to be repeating throughout this entire song. Um, uh, you can hear the bells and the atmosphere there. And then I added just a couple of basic effects for the uh, for the build up little horror effects thing and then this uh, this is just a regular riser um, pretty boilerplate stuff for production um, and for drums for the build up we just have our hat loop that's continuing from the intro there um, and we're going to introduce our kick our nice thick heavy noir kick shout out noir um, And that hat loop just has like some delay and I messed with the, the timing percentage on it just so it gives it that weird like stereo swing that you hear just so it's not a boring quarter note pattern. Some of the other elements that uh, we're going to introduce during this build up is the this effects. Those kind of remind me of the piranha plants in Super Mario Sunshine. Um, that doesn't really matter though. Uh, these are going to go through the whole song and it's just uh, just a little like bass sample. And then uh, it's just got some pitch down, some EQ saturation, and some reverb, and we uh, shrink the width a little bit. And just change the pitch up a little bit to keep it interesting for some uh, background ear candy. Uh, and we're also going to start to introduce the main synth here um, in the build-up. Just sort of filtering in slowly. Um, to sort of introduce the bass to you before we actually introduce it. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the buildup. Moving on to the drop, we're going to start with the drums, because again, they're pretty simple. Uh, we have this noir kick, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be a techno kick, but we ball. Uh, it's got a pretty cursed EQ kick on there. Uh, it's fully mono. Uh, there's no transient shaping. It's literally just the EQ and the saturator. Nice, thick, and long kick. Um, for our snare, we have an ivory clap that is uh, turned down, I'm pretty sure, a fair amount of semitones. 16, um, to give us that super like low sort of crunch. Like, There's the drum. And then uh, we just have like a Joe B snare ring with a tiny bit of reverb on it, and then together. Uh, so it just gives it that uh, that extra little bit on top and that little pitch to sort of, you know, play in with the other parts of the song. Uh, and then the hat loop continues, but I believe we turn the delay off for the drop just to keep it a little cleaner. Uh, and that's literally it for the for the drums for the drop. Super, super simple stuff. Just um, they're good quality samples, uh, so they didn't need much. Um, and I think that's a really, really important part about writing music um, is you have to start with like a really, really good bass layer of sounds or else... You're just going to be working too hard at the wrong things, uh, as opposed to, like, mix down is important, but uh, it may cause you to focus more on the mix down than uh, writing the actual music, which uh, I think we can all agree is the end goal, right? 
All right, so now we're going to move on to the fun stuff, the big heavy stuff in the drop. Um, this entire tune is centered around one main synth, uh, and it's going to be this guy here. So I'm going to turn everything off and we can deconstruct this patch from uh, from its original original form. Uh, so if we open up Serum here, pretty, pretty basic patch. A um, little bit of like extra stuff going on. This one is going to be our volume and then our wavetable moving. Um, little bandpass filter and like a pretty regular like set of effects on it. Um, you can pause and like copy all these if you want and steal the patch. I might even put the patch in the description for you guys. Um, uh, and this mod, I feel like, is just uh, moving this uh, filter to give some different tonality to it. Um, uh, and our mod wheel here is moving our wavetable position for A just a bit more to give it that like squelchiness um because it stays pretty tame when it's at this part of the wavetable but when it moves to this part of the wavetable it gets that really like it's where those like nice high pitched like plucks come from just gives it a bit of extra like high tonality uh so that's pretty much it for the serum um and if we move down our effects chain we have i'm pretty sure this is the old virtual riot fat rack i can't remember exactly but um that's going to give it some beef, and then we cut the sub from it, and then next is going to be a disperser. That's that sort of laseriness in the middle, um, and then we have a formant filter, which is another very, very big part of the sound. Um, gives it a bit more, bit more mouth, a bit more grit to it, uh, and that um, is, I believe, is going to be on both. Yeah, it's going for the lows and the highs. Uh, and then we're going to uh, add an erosion in there. Sort of soften the top end out. Uh, and this next one I want to stop on for a minute because this is a really, really big part of my music. Um, this is uh, a trick that I saw on Infects Twitter and then I've seen like other iterations of it from different producers. Um, but So basically, you're going to send your sub to this ring mod uh, and set it on the input 3.4. And then you mess around with the shapes, and then whenever the sub plays, it's going to add an effect that makes it seem like the bass is clipping, but it's really not. I can't really explain it. I wish I wish I had better words to explain it, but um, I'll play it with. As opposed to without. It just adds that sort of grit, and it's only triggered by when the sub is playing, and it's also triggered by the amplitude of the sub. Um, so if you turn this up a bunch, you can hear it like more, um, more obviously. Um, but it's really, really nice. Uh, it's great in rhythm music, and I find for a lot of like sustain basses and stuff like that, it really helps glue everything together with the sub and make everything sound like a concise song at the end of it. Um, and then after uh, our ring mod clipper, we're gonna have an imager, a soothe, uh, a soft clipper, an EQ. Uh, and then a couple filters into a limiter to make sure we're not peaking over zero. And then finished off, this is what it sounds like out of context. Sounds good, it's still a little dry, so what I did was I sent it to another track where I have a Valhalla room. These are the settings for that. Uh, I flipped the phase on my completely wet reverb to uh, phase out any of the original signal that might be poking through. Uh, and I have a bass mono and an EQ, and together this sounds like that. A little bit better. It's just in a space, so it uh, it's a little bit more cohesive. Um, and that's the main synth of the song. Moving on to the sub. Sub is on the exact same pattern as the uh, as our main patch here. Just, And I'll go through these serum stuff, and uh, you guys can uh, pause and copy everything if you'd like. Um, but the sub is fairly simplified as well, just uh, lots of saturation, uh, some pretty low cutoffs. Um, that's pretty much it. So another cool part of the song is the scratch effects, uh, and they, I find they really accent the, uh, the stop and go elements of the song, like, really, really well. Um, 
they're just uh, nice small things. They sort of sound familiar to electronic music and that sort of thing. And in context, this is what that sounds like. So they're definitely hidden back there. They're definitely not a main element of the song. They're tucked behind this main bass, but they do add like a nice element um, to your flow as opposed to just without it. It does lose a lot. Like it's good, but we like to go that extra mile and make sure you know our ears are our ears are tickled with nice with nice sounds. Uh, and so this scream bass, actually, now that I hear it, uh, I'm pretty sure this is just resampled noise and then warped a bunch on beat mode. Because uh, if you keep stuff on beat, um, and then if you keep it, like, put it back to zero, that's a super weird sound. But for some reason, if you turn on, uh, keep it on beats and then, like, pitch shift up, you get those weird glitchy, like, repeating sounds. And honestly, I don't think I processed this sound at all. Oh, just a little bit. But um, very, very minimal. You can get some really cool stuff out of the beat uh, warping stuff. Um, definitely something worth looking into. For achieving the sort of like stop and go effect, um, a lot of it comes from uh, the Kilohertz Tape Stop plugin and then a combination with uh, this vocal unwinding with the Redux trick that was mentioned earlier. Um, so for the stop and go portions, uh, or um, the stop is the entire song resampled with a tape stop on it. It's pretty simple. You'll look down and there's nothing playing that's part of the actual song except for the vocals, which are going to combine with this to create that sort of down and up in tension really, really quickly. So just the tape stop is going to sound like this. Just the full hit with everything and then just tape stop to nothing. But then if we hold on to this and then go down to our vocals and combine them together with that first effect that I showed you, it sounds like this. So it's a nice stop and then it's unwinding at the same time and brings you back up and um basically the whole song is just sort of variations of um of that sort of fill uh and it, it made out for uh something really really cool i'm really happy um really happy with the way it turned out all right folks well that's everything in the project file uh, i just want to thank you for sticking around and watching my video uh, i want to thank phase one and sounds of mayhem for the opportunity as well you can check out the uprising 2 it's out now everywhere uh hope you have a great day we'll see you next time Go!